All right, gang, we are going to go ahead and get started. We did get some messages from others that they had meetings and things like that. We might, might see people jumping in and joining us, and we hope that will happen. But to honor your time, I want to go ahead and get started so that we have our full hour together. A few housekeeping items before I just dive right into the information. First things first, so often we dive onto these calls and we see it as our opportunity to multitask. We have our phone in our other hand, and we're checking emails and answering text messages. It's so important to me that you receive high value out of this hour that we're going to spend together. I'm going to ask, unless you are on emergency contact for someone in the next hour, to turn your phone over and slide it off to the side. The other reason I want you to do that is because this call might be a little bit different than what you're used to. This is going to be a very interactive hour together. So I see this as my opportunity to share some really great ideas with you. I also see this as our call. This is not just me delivering info. This is you finding ways that you can interact, hear what other people have to say, offer some of your own input, and really share and learn with each other. Your value will go up if you interact on this call. So if that feels scary to you, that's okay. So a lot of people don't love interacting on virtual calls. They always are glad they did when they dial off the call. They always feel like they got more out of that time spent. You know, you've carved out an hour to be here tonight. Why not get as much value out of it as you absolutely can? The third housekeeping item, I'll manage the mutes. When I hand it off to you for some interaction, when I want to hear from you, I'll either prompt you to unmute or I have an option on this end to unmute all. But I'll give us friendly reminders so that we don't run into that strange, awkward moment where someone was talking and they were on mute. So I'll manage that. I'll help you out with that. Last piece, and before we get started, I'll give you a minute. If you want to step away and do this, everyone should have a piece of paper and a pen handy. So speak now or forever hold your peace if you need more than a minute to go find a piece of paper and a pen. So I'll just give you a moment to do that if you haven't didn't have one handy, and then we'll get started. All right, let's get going. Thank you all for coming onto this call tonight. I was really excited when Eric and I came up with the idea of putting this content together. There are so many things that I've learned in the work that I do that I always come home and tell Eric, oh, I wanna share this with all of your team. I wanna share this with your people. So this is finally my opportunity to offer a little bit of what I've learned out to Eric's team, and I just am thrilled to have the chance to do that. Now, before I get too deep into the content of what I wanted to share, I want to address a possible hurdle that I may have right at the forefront. I'm guessing some of you out there may have seen this invitation come through and thought, Okay, so Sarah's going to talk to us as building credibility as a Beachbody leader, but Sarah doesn't actively work a Beachbody business. So how can she be credible when it comes to Beachbody? <laughs> Valid question. So I'm going to address that right off the bat. So much of what I have learned in doing what I do, and I'm going to explain my role a little bit deeper to you in just a moment, so much applies to anyone who is trying to establish themselves as a leader. Whether you are an absolute beginner in your business, whether you are already a well-established leader, no matter what industry, part-time, full-time, the core things that I wanna share with you today apply across the board. So while I don't actively work my personal Beachbody business, there is an account under my name. My husband over here to my left works that account. I only offer administrative support. I'm a cheerleader. I share ideas. Sometimes I edit some videos and some posts to make sure that they sound good. That's my role. 
But what I have to share with you, I've seen in so many different industries and so many different people. I'm really excited to pass it along in the Beachbody realm. My hope one day is that Beachbody and the firm I work for partner so I can offer even more of this. So I've got tons and tons of information on communication and being a strong leader. Tonight, before I get into everything, let me give you an idea of who I am and what I do for a living and what makes me have credibility with you tonight. Why this information that I have to share holds water. About four years ago, I made a huge career change. I left the, the entire fitness industry and went into a, a field that is my absolute lifelong passion, which is speech communications. It's what I went to college for. My career path took this really curvy, weird way. We don't have enough time to follow that whole path tonight. But I got a call at a crossroads in my career that completely changed my life. I was called by the owner of a communication firm out of Chicago, Illinois, named Stacy Hunky. And she said, I heard you think or you, that you might be good at my work. And I said, I think I would really enjoy your work. She said, well, let me tell you about it and see if it's a match. She told me about the work. I knew exactly that some sort of divine intervention had just happened. It was my dream job, and it fell right in my lap. I thank my lucky stars every day it happened. I teach communication skills to executives and leaders all over the country in all different industries. I meet with people either in groups of small groups, three to ten, and their core goal is to show up and for one or two full days, find out, am I coming across the way that I want to come across? Am I having the impact I could have when I speak? And what can I improve to be a better leader and a better communicator? We spend two days with a video camera and a lot of hard work, and I give tons of coaching and feedback. And I've had the pleasure of meeting people in so many different industries with so many different stories. The key trait in all of these leaders that I have worked with, everyone has something to learn and a true leader knows they are never done learning. So they show up vulnerable, open, and we work really, really hard. It is the most gratifying career I have ever had. In working with these leaders, I have learned so much about credibility and why it's so important for you to be successful as a Beachbody coach. So that's what we're going to spend the next 45 minutes or so talking about. Now ask yourself, I can only see some of you at a time, so I won't ask for a show of hands, but ask yourself, do you really desire, do you have a burning desire to be seen as a leader in your Beachbody business? Now most of you, I have to believe, answered yes, or you would not have come to this, this meeting tonight. The answer is yes. You have a desire. There are skills that you want to learn. You want to be seen as a leader. Now ask yourself this. Do I have one coach or one client currently? The answer is yes. Every one of you has a customer or a coach who is looking to be led by you. You already are a leader. So whether you see yourself as a leader or not, someone else out there does. And it's critical that some of your behaviors start to show those leadership qualities. Some of the behaviors that you do day to day build that credibility and show them that they've made the right choice. So by Webster's definition, credibility is the quality in a human that makes them believable or worthy of trust. Trust and believability are so incredibly important when it comes to being a good business person. Without trust and without being believable, people simply won't get on board with your ideas as fast. Credibility is a leader's currency. How fast your business grows or does not grow leans heavily on how credible you are perceived. Mm -hmm. so for the next time that we have together, there are two things I'm going to ask you to do. One, be reflective. When we dive through three key things that you can do to become more credible as a leader, ask yourself along the way, do I do these things or don't I? If you don't know 
if you're doing those things and they're showing up on the other end, be ready to ask people for feedback. Ask them, does this come through in how we interact? Stay open to the idea that some of what we talk about you may not do, and that's okay. That's what we're here to learn. What are the behaviors? How do I duplicate them so that I can establish credibility? The other idea is be open to the idea of increasing your awareness all the time. And that's one of the things I tell so many of the leaders that I work with. If you're willing to just be open and increase your awareness, your potential for growth is unlimited. If you are willing to put yourself out there, learn new things, and be open to the idea that you're not done that you haven't perfected any skill, and there's always room for growth, you will have more and more impact all the time. Because credible leaders are always open to learning more. When you put your head around these three things we're going to go through today, there's three really great things that will happen for you. You will come through to your clients, your customers, your coaches, to your whole team as more believable and more trustworthy. When you come through, when those traits in you shine through, people are more likely to act on what you want them to act. Whether it's growing their own business or following through on their program, they will act with more consistency when you're believable and trustworthy in your interactions with them. Good news for you, when they act more, your business grows faster. Now, much like fitness, such as leadership and credibility. You don't ever really get there and then be done. Now, wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be great if Beachbody's next program was 60 days and you're done, you're fit for life? Because if that's on the docket, I'm going in the test group. I would love that if that would be a product. That's not real life, folks. We're never done with anything. It is a constant development. It's a constant commitment to what it takes to stay fit and keep setting new goals to just get better and better, rolling with the changes. The same thing goes with leadership and credibility. There is no course you can take. There is no certification class you can take where you're done. You are a leader and you are credible. It's a constant process. Let's talk about three things you can do on a consistent basis. Three things you can pay attention to every day, every week, that will establish your credibility as a leader. Item number one, first thing you want to give attention to is your consistency. The second thing we'll talk about, follow through and follow up. How do you manage those? And the third piece, your brand, or your, I like to call it your leadership identity. Consistency. How consistent are you in key behaviors? The first way you have to show consistency in what you do as a Beachbody coach for your coaches and for your customers is you have to do the work too. You have to be consistent with your working out, your eating, your sleep, your water, everything that we preach, you have to be willing to do. So one of the biggest complaints that I hear with people I work with and they talk about their leaders is he or she expects me to do things that I, that they're not willing to do. If that's the truth, if we're not willing to do what we're asking people to do, we have lost credibility with them. Because now we're just looking for worker bees to help us grow our business instead of developing people. And you have to keep yourself on the same plane. It keeps you humble, it keeps you approachable and it makes you show I'll do whatever you're going to do. I will be in the trenches with you. I was recently with a client in Columbus, Ohio, Nationwide Insurance, one of our biggest clients. We were working with a new team there that week. I had never met any of them. I go in, I kick off my two-day workshop and I start getting to know people. We have some, some casual conversation to start the workshop. What I did know about the next five workshops they had booked, groups of 10, five in a row, 50 people, it was a new sales force that they had just put into place. A whole new division created a new sales team, and these 50 people going through the workshops were their 50 strongest salespeople. As I'm kicking off, as I'm interacting, I learn that the gentleman 
front seat to my left is not one of those salespeople. He's the vice president of sales who hired the gentleman who hired those gentlemen. He was two levels up from everyone else in the room. He took the most vulnerable chair in the room and he got in the trenches with them. Now when I was kicking off, I told you, our workshops are really vulnerable. They're incredibly uncomfortable, video cameras, getting up on your feet, trying communication skills over and over, being coached in the moment by me or one of my counterparts. It's a really vulnerable feeling. His team was so dialed in because he was willing to get that vulnerable in front of them. The credibility he earned by signing up for one of those spots spoke volumes to the rest of his team. The people I heard, I didn't get to, to lead the other workshops that trailed behind, but my counterparts, my co-trainers told me the people in the fifth group, people number 48, 49, and 50 were talking about the fact that Tom took workshop number one. It made such an impression. So be that leader. Be the one that will get in the trenches with them. How consistently do you work your business? If you want your business to be seen as such, people have to see you working it as such. Inc. Magazine, one of my all-time favorite business resources, March 2015, published an article, The 10 Most Popular Traits of Credible Leaders. Number six on the list, hardworking and committed. So do your clients and your fellow coaches see you working out? Good. That means you're being consistent there. Do they also see you working your business? Now let's talk social media. Are you only posting pictures of yourself working out? That's good. It's a start. Could you also post a picture of your desk with a cup of tea? Could you also check in at Starbucks where you've gone to work on your Beachbody business for an hour? Show people that you are consistently giving time to your business every single day. You can't expect them to work their business daily if you don't work your business daily. So show them that you're doing that. If we're talking clients who don't ever intend on joining the team as a coach, let them know this is your business and it matters to you. It matters to you so much you give it daily attention. Consistency in your interactions with others. That's the third piece of consistency that is so important. So ask yourself these questions. How often do you communicate with your customers or coaches? Do you communicate daily? Do you communicate weekly? Is it really sporadic? If the answer is that it's sporadic, come up with a game plan. Find a way to be consistent <laughs> with them so that they know what to expect of you. In your communications with them, create variety. If it's all through Facebook and all they ever hear is, hey, just checking in, how's 21 Day Fix going? Their answer usually is going to be, going pretty well, thanks. Now you've reached out, but have you really engaged? So create some variety. Maybe you might hear from, reach out to them with a re recipe. Hey, I know you're doing the 21 day fix. I stumbled across this great recipe. I tried it the other night. You have to try it. And rather than just posting it, private message it to one of your people. Let them know you thought of them. And that variety will personalize your business. When you're able to personalize it, it makes you more credible. It shows that it matters. It shows that you're taking the time to reach out to each of your individual people in unique ways. When you reach out to people verbally, now it's not a Facebook or an email or a text, now it's voice to voice, ask open-ended questions. Here's what goes on sometimes. Oh, hey, it's good, it's good to see you. How's the program going? Good, good. Well, good, good, well, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm glad, I, I, like, I like it. Good. There's not a whole lot going on there. So instead of, how's the program going, try something a little bit different. Hey, great to see you. What do you like about the program so far? And pause. Give them time to answer that question, because pretty soon, 
they'll start telling you a lot more than good. And you'll really hear what they like. Have you run into any hurdles with it? Anything I can help you through that would make it either more effective or easier for you or more manageable? How, how can I help you? If you haven't heard from a coach in a while and you want to initiate a conversation, instead of just checking in, how about something like, hi, I haven't talked to you yet this week. Email me back, shoot me a message, name one way I can be helpful to you next week. So now you're asking for some real feedback. One of my favorite examples of the value of open-ended questions happens right here in my home. It has been a huge change that we've made in our family and I am loving the effects. I noticed when we sit down and have dinner with the kids or they're coming home from school, how's your day? It's good. Yeah? Yeah, it's good. Anything out of the ordinary? No. Just a regular day. And then it was kind of over. So instead, we tried something new a while back called Roses and Thorns. The kids sit around the table, we sit down, and everybody has to share a rose for the day and a thorn. And now the stories start coming out, how their day really was. What good happened in their day? What happened that wasn't so good? What was disappointing? Our conversations have completely changed. Now, you could take Roses and Thorns to your team. Hey guys, end of the week, we just finished week three of uh, your uh, first round of 21 Day Fix, Roses and Thorns. What was good about it? What'd you do well? What, what did you stumble on this week? What did you need help with? Now you've got real conversation going. When you can prompt real conversation, your credibility as a leader skyrockets. So make those interactions exactly what they, the word suggests interactions, not just touch points, real connective tissue. Questions so far. We just talked about the first point, consistency. Does anybody have anything they struggle with when it comes to consistency? I have one. Let's hear it. I think for me, it's not more so like knowing what to do, but like sticking to like a schedule to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So you know what to do when you reach out. It's the accountability with yourself. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, Hi. Said that now. okay. Now that they heard you before, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. I think I've done the accountability partner, but I think it's like, it's been off and on. So yeah. Yep. Well, I appreciate the segue into my next point. Let's dive forward. I think you might get some ideas out of this next piece that we cover together. So it really comes down to follow through and follow up. And those are two different things. When we talk follow through, I'm talking about the commitment that you've made with yourself. And there is no accountability partner that can replace your decision to do what you've made a commitment to do. So I'll give you some ideas of how you can keep yourself accountable when we wrap up the call. But first, revisit what you signed up to do. So as a coach, with your follow through, break it down to the simplest three things this company has given you. Every single day, period, the three vital behaviors. All right, unmuted folks, what are they? Recap them for me. What's the first of the three vital behaviors? Invite. Invite, invite, invite. What's the next one? Be proof the product proof. works. Proof, proof of the product, product of the product. And what's the third? Personal development. Personal development. Thank you very much. Personal development. There's a fourth I hear that they are very likely going to add. Isn't that right, honey? They're very likely going to add in their recognition. Yeah. That's such an important piece. Who doesn't love to be recognized? I need it. Eric needs it. Every one of you need it. We love to be acknowledged for the work we do. So every single day, if you do nothing <clears throat> else, the three vital behaviors. Because here's the thing, that business model was not created just as words, it was created because it's proven that it works. 
And even though we want to really start peppering in all these really cool ideas, I love the creativity but only around one of the vital behaviors. If the creative things that you're coming up with don't resonate or align with one of the three vital behaviors, ask yourself if it's the, if it's the best use of time for the day. Because boy, we can kill some time scrolling Facebook posts and figuring out something clever to say, and we can kill a lot of time Googling and coming up with clever this or clever that, or looking at other people's Facebook posts and wishing, oh wow, I wish I could have as big of a presence on Facebook as he or she has. Ah, boil it down to those three behaviors, because this comes back to your consistency. No one you bring on board as a client or a coach will be likely to do the three vital behaviors if you don't. So as much as we wish and want to believe it was true, this is not a post it on Facebook once a day and get rich company. It just doesn't happen. We see people do it. That's not what is going to make the company work. It's not what's going to make your business grow. So to jump in and post once or twice a day, that's a good thing. It's showing some presence, but it's not the only thing. So ask yourself, am I really going to the three vital behaviors first? And if the answer is no, then ask yourself, well, why would they? If you've got coaches who have joined your organization, if you're not demonstrating to them, consistency in the three vital behaviors, don't ever expect them to demonstrate the same to you. Because here's the thing, people want to be led by copycatting exactly what you do. I've heard from different coaches in Eric's organization that it's all really confusing at first. It absolutely is. I was confused by it at first too. I still am. <laughs> it overwhelms me. But what people will do is copy you. So create behaviors that you want them to emulate. People just want to be shown what to do. So show them the company has created that business model for you for a reason. With your clients and your coaches, how you follow up is really critical. Ask yourself what you're following up. Take a look at it in your mind. What does it look like? When someone reaches out and they decide they might want to invest in a program or Shakeology, they think, maybe this coaching thing is kind of up my alley. You get an email or a Facebook message from them. What does your follow-up behavior look like? There were some really cool statistics I stumbled across when I was putting this together for you today. And follow-up is more important than you might think. So take a look at some of these stats. You know, for those of you who are on via phone, I'm going to read them to you so that you can get the value. First stat that really blew me away, 44% of people give up after one follow-up. So they try once, and if the person says, oh, you know, it's a little more expensive than what I thought, or oh, I'm not, you know, I'm kind of waiting on my tax return, or ah, it seems intense, I'm not ready, I'm going to make that commitment, they'll be done. They'll never reach out again. Now check this out. 80% of commitments that people make require five follow-up interactions. What does that mean to you? From a credibility standpoint, if someone wants to be led, they need to hear from you often. They might not commit to being led by you right away. And what establishes that credibility with them is your persistence. Now, do we hound them? No. Are you gonna buy the program? Are you gonna buy the program? Did you decide to buy the program yet? That is not how we follow up. Remember, now we go back to interaction. Open-ended questions. What did you think about the link that I sent to you when you had the chance to watch the video on 21 Day Fix? Which parts of it look doable to you? Which parts scare you? How can I help you understand the program better? These are open-ended questions. Nine times out of 10, you will get three or four sentences or even paragraphs if it's written communication with an open-ended question. If you send them an interaction that says, did you have a chance to watch the link? Your, your response will probably be one quick sentence. So think about how you're gauging those interactions. Get them talking, written or spoken. Last stat I love, 
50% of commitments are made with the person who follows up first. So from an interactive standpoint, from a follow-up standpoint, if you don't see that message or respond to it for four or five or six days, if your follow-up is really sporadic and inconsistent, there's a good chance you'll miss the boat. There's a good chance that they will contact someone else in some way, shape, or form and choose someone else as their leader. So on, people will only take it as seriously as you appear to. So that initial follow-up is really critical. You're going to send a lot of messages in the wording and the timing of that follow-up that suggests how seriously you take your business. Go back into your message chains. See how you followed up with people. And after hearing this, see if there's anything you would change that you could reword that may have prompted more interaction. Now, the next piece on follow through and follow up seems counterintuitive to everything I just said. So roll with me here for a moment. The last piece, establish your business hours. There are some really important reasons why you do this. First things first, now let's think coaching. If you, someone is thinking they might wanna get on board as a Beachbody coach, one of the biggest benefits that we express to people is it's so flexible. I mean, you know, five, 10 hours a week, you can get some business going and you can just do it whenever. That's great, but what if they're seeing you respond to their messages anywhere from 5.15 a.m. to 10.30 p.m.? Is that flexible or is she working it like a dog? <laughs> now maybe there's an upside. There could be an upside. Yeah, she, boy, she really takes her business seriously. She works it at all different hours. Or maybe she's working it around the hours of her children or her family. But could it be perceived as five or 10 hours a week? No way. I see her posting all day on Facebook, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. I send her a private message. She automatically responds. It's 10.45 p.m. I, I don't I just don't have the availability for that. So there's one downside to be careful with how that incessant availability can come across. Second, could it be perceived as just a hobby instead of a business? So when's the last time you decided at 2 a.m. that you were craving some frozen yogurt and Family Fresh just opened the doors right up? Yeah, come on in, you need some yogurt? Be happy to open up and sell you some yogurt. It doesn't happen. It's because Family Fresh has a business plan and they have business hours. And when business is closed, they're resting or they're spending time with their family or their hobbies, whatever they want to do. So if you want to be seen as a business, operate as a business. Some people even go as far as to check out on the weekend for a holiday or a little getaway and leave that bounce back message. Facebook, you can't do that. And I know a lot of this is done via Facebook now. Email messages, I am out of my Beachbody office until Sunday p.m. at 6. I will follow up with you then. And that shows that you value your business. It also shows that you balance, value your life balance. That's really critical to set a reputation. I like to call it reputation management. Do you want to be seen as someone who has zero life balance, but man, you're working that business, or do you want your business to be seen as something that's very doable in set hours? My, the founder of our firm, Stacy Hunky, is the perfect example of this. I can message her right up until 5 p.m. on a Friday, and I will almost always get a response still in the same business day. But anything after 5 p.m., I will not hear from her until Monday morning. Now, on a personal note, I know Stacy really well now. I know that she runs our entire firm out of her home office, and I know she puts in a ton of hours on the weekend because we've grown exponentially. I know she's there. I know she saw my message, but what she's taught me is I've got some boundaries. So after 5 p.m. on a Friday, she will follow up first thing on Monday. Now I just have learned to honor that. 
I don't even bother unless it's something I don't want to forget. So teach your people the same thing. Because leaders have balance. And when they see you have balance, they will learn that being part of your team will create balance for them too. Next piece that I cannot say enough about. I wish we had three hours. I will spare you three hours of Sarah. Your leadership identity is a critical piece to your success. Some people call it a brand. I like this term better because it goes deeper than just a brand. Who are you as a leader? That's the first question your leadership identity answers. The second question it answers, why would I want to be led by you? There are 20,000 coaches I could buy a product from or join an organization with. Why do I want to be led by you? What traits do you have that are going to create a path for me that I'm going to enjoy? What, what are you going to bring me in this relationship that will make me want to be better? And those, that is your leadership identity. What do people see in you and get from you that establishes you as a leader? Now here's our exercise for the night. Got that paper and pen handy? Give some thought. And I'm going to give you some minutes of just silence to come up with these answers. Think about this. People who are on your team or are your customer or client, what five things would you like them to identify if they are explaining their total experience of having this relationship with you? What would you want them to say about you? Five things. I'm going to give you a moment to write that down, and then we're going to continue with the exercise. Go ahead and take that time. Five things a client or a coach on your team would say about you the total what is the total experience like to have this relationship with you how would they describe it All right, I'm going to give you one more minute. If you haven't gotten your full five, that's okay. We'll still have enough to, to hear from you and share them. One more minute. All right, let's hear some of these. I'm gonna call you out by name, because I can see who's here. Just give me one. One of, the, one of the adjectives or words or phrases you came up with. So everyone take a moment to unmute. I might be able to do that on my end. Let me see here. Yeah. Can I do unmute all? All right, everyone is officially unmuted. Jordy. A word, a phrase, one of your items you came up with, what's the experience like to have this relationship with you as your coach or your client? Dependable. Okay, one more time. Dependable. Dependable. Tony Lopez, one of yours. Respectful. Respectful. Christina. Uh, genuinely, genuinely happy to have me aboard. I love it. Genuinely happy to be on board. Steve, what you got? Um, he listens to me. Good listener to me. Good listener. 
Mary Beth. <coughs> Supportive. Say it one more time, Mary Beth. Supportive. Supporting, of course. Linda. Empathetic. Empathetic, so important. Sammy. Um, <clears throat> personable. Personable, so important. Molly, what you got? Motivational. Motivational. Who did I miss? Laura. I put energetic. Energetic, it's important. Nobody wants to be led by a drip. <laughs> did I miss anyone else? I think that's everyone. Drip, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Your leadership identity is going to be so important for people to identify why exactly they've chosen you. Why did they jump on your team? And there's a lot of different ways that you are communicating to people all the time what that leadership identity is. Now, here's what you do with that list of five before we get into these other ways. Take that list, go to one of your dearest friends sometime in the next three or four days and ask them the same question to write down five things of what the total experience of being your friend feels like for them. What's it like? And here's what I want you to do. Compare the lists. Because this is where authenticity comes in. Because you can have a desire to be a certain way. But if how you really show up and your best qualities are something else, there's going to be a lack of consistency. And your leadership identity is only such when it shows up all the time. Your best self is showing up for that dear friend. So if your list that you made doesn't match your friends, it's time to assess what you need to work on because you want those lists to look very similar. Your best, most authentic self that you show up for your team and for your clients. But here's how we show up. Here are different ways that we show up for them that you should be contemplating. Social media photos for business. I'm going to go ahead and mute, mute all of you until we interact again. <laughs> Oops. Sarah, you muted yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm back. Now I'm all of you, not myself. <laughs> all right, social media photos for business. Some very quick and succinct how to's. Ask yourself are they interesting? Are they creative and is there variety? If you scroll, go to your Facebook page, scroll down as though you've never met yourself before. Scroll down. If they're interesting, if they are creative, and if there is lots of variety, there's a good chance that you don't have to change a thing. If they always look the same, if all of them are just posts of you working out, if all of them are just posts of your food, shake it up. Because variety is going to grab and keep their attention. The same looking photo of the same scenario every time is not going to grab and keep attention. And you want to see them to see all different parts of you, not just one part of you. So shake up those photos. If you see someone out in our team who does a really great job with theirs, ask, for, ask what they use. What apps do they use? How does it work? That's a really critical piece. How are you showing up? Uh, in your social media identity. Second piece, your non beach body persona and social media. But if you're using Facebook to drive your business, and even when you're not, we're talking in live now here, do your personas match? Is there consistency in your behaviors and how you show up on that Facebook wall that makes you believable? So here's an, here's an example. Take a look at the screen. Consistency establishes identity. Because when there's not consistency, we have, we're left to believe who's who. So if on Sunday, you post this great picture of you working out, great photo, great form on those abs, and then on Thursday, you're winning the burger eating contest. And then on Sunday, you're going to church hand in hand, happy, 
might even be a skip and some birds tweeting in the background. And then on Thursday, you post this. Who do I believe? How do I know who you are? Reputation management, what's real? So scroll through and see if there's a consistency in your social media presence. Are you showing up consistently optimistic? Are you engaging and creative? Are you positive? Because if you are lacking those things, people will be less likely to engage with you. If you are too close to the topic with your Facebook wall, ask for feedback from a friend who you really appreciate and receive feedback well from. Okay, scroll through. I'm specifically wanting to know, do I appear like a leader? Ask them for that feedback. Last piece on your leadership identity that's near and dear to my heart, your interactions. How you interact with people out loud can build your credibility or diminish it in a moment. There are so many different roadblocks we create for ourselves in the spoken word. And I'm going to just dive in very gently to some of the communicative behaviors where you can get in your own way. I'm going to demo something for you here. Okay, this is a role play. This is not really me. So here's my little, there we go. Hey, hey, Mary, thank I Yes, I'm really glad that you met with me today. So you're, you're interested in a Beachbody program. Mary says, yeah, you know, um, I was just really, I was really hoping to finally get moving. You know, it's time. Let me, first of all, let me tell you my story. So I was, I used to be really overweight and I decided to get fit and, um, you know, I had been through just a lot of really bad stuff and, um, it was just time for me, and so I joined a gym, and that really didn't work for me. And with and so, well, sort of what I'm hearing from you is that um, so I'm hearing that you want to get fit. So I guess I, you know, if if you're wanting to really get after it, I, I this new program just came out. It's um, you know, it's called Body Beast. Now I'm no expert. I'm not not you know, I'm not like a trainer or anything. So um, you know. It is to take it, take it, you know, it is, it take it with a grain of salt. But I, you know, I did a few of the workouts. They seem really good, and I think if you want to build some muscle, you know, because muscle burns fat. I mean, I'm not like a nutritional expert or anything, but um, I think Body Beast would probably be a pretty good choice for you. And Mary replies to me, "Oh, well, thank you for yeah, wow, thanks for telling me that whole story." Um, while she's looking at her watch, and says, um, "Oh, I." I don't have weights and my doctor said that I because I, I, I don't know if you heard me I was trying to tell you that I got both of my knees replaced so I can't lift weights at all I've been called off weights altogether so I guess what I'm really trying to say is first I'd like to get my nutrition in check oh well why did you say so 21 day fix sorry I, I, I should have given you more time okay end of demo I hope that that was dramatic enough that you got how awful that was so what really went wrong there? The key thing where we fall short is we get so excited and we get so driven to help that we forget to listen. And what I really needed to ask Mary is what are your goals? How are you feeling? Do you have any restrictions? What have you tried? And then I could have pointed her right to the right program. So pause and take more time to learn about your potential client or coach first, and then go in and share your story. Because a leader, according to Inc. Magazine, confidence and empathy fall very high on the list of a good leader. So be confident enough to be silent and empathetic enough to let them tell their story first. Because when we give people lots and lots of information, I like to call it a brain dump, we confuse them. You give so much information, you make it hard for them to decide or act. There's too much to sift through. Ask the right questions that can help you say more with less. Because here's the truth. The less you say, the more people remember. 
So make listening and deciding with you really easy for whomever you're interacting with. Choose a point, choose a goal for the conversation and stick to it. There will be more conversations to continue to share your knowledge. You don't have to get it all out in one conversation. It's too much becomes too much to digest, which creates objections and delays. So doses. Give your coach, give your client just enough, leave them wanting a little bit more. Show your confidence. You'll notice, I don't know if you picked up on it in my demo, <clears throat> but I was constantly selling myself short. I mean, I'm no expert or anything. I'm, I mean, I'm not a trainer or anything. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do, but if they want you to lead them, they want you to tell them what to do. So be confident in your own competence that you can lead them well. Does that mean you have to have all the answers? Absolutely not. Also have confidence in the fact that you don't have to know it all. Because you have resources to go find it, either online or in this awesome team that you belong on. So be confident enough to express your opinions, help and guide them. Be confident enough to say, I don't know, but I'm going to find out for you. Credibility is critical. It's the most important skill that you can develop to be a strong leader. And the most, the more credibility you continue to build and establish, <clears throat> the more people will want to join forces with you. So there are three assignments I'm going to give you as we wrap things up. Here are the three things I want you to commit to. Create your business game plan and stick to it. Laura said, I have a hard time. <clears throat> I have an accountability partner, but I have a really hard time following through. Keep it simple, Laura. Only give yourself three things to do a day, no more. And don't add anything to it until you have mastered those three things for a full month. Because now you've got a habit. Even if you want to do more, don't do more. Create a habit and build upon it. The second assignment I have for you, remember those five things you wrote down? Within the next week, take that list, put it in your back pocket, ask a good friend to make that same list. Do the comparison and make the assessment. If your two lists are completely disaligned, assess what you need to work on to become the leader you visualize yourself being. There are real tactical things you can do to come across and come through exactly the way that you want to in a very authentic way. When you develop that skill, people will naturally follow you. Third thing, <clears throat> before the end of this week, ask someone you trust for open and frank feedback on your social media posts and your face-to-face -face interactions. <clears throat> your face-to-face -face interactions. Here's the thing. This is a really vulnerable topic. Who you ask is critical to this being effective for you. Ask someone who you know will be honest. Don't ask the person who always tells you good job. Good job is not feedback. What was good about it? That's feedback. Ask the person who will say, this doesn't work. This didn't work well. And here's what I think you could do better. That's feedback. Also ask someone who you know delivers feedback diplomatically in a way you like to receive it. That will open up the interaction. That feedback will resonate with you deeper. Put these things into play one step at a time. No different than how we ask our clients to put on the gym shoes and put the DVD in. I'm asking you to put on your leadership gym shoes and put these three things into play on a daily basis. When you do it consistently, you're going to build a stronger foundation of trust. When people trust you more, they're more likely to act. When they act more, your business grows. What questions do you have for me on anything we've talked about in the last hour together? Molly, 
What was your biggest takeaway of this hour together? You'll have to all unmute yourselves. Uh, everything. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, I'm asking you for your, the key one. What's your favorite thing you learned? Oh my goodness. Um, I think I really liked like the follow up and how important that is and to ask the open ended questions. Good. Good. What about you, Christina? Biggest takeaway from the last hour? No, I think the follow up is, um, I agree with Molly on that. But I guess my, my mind is kind of ticking, thinking that perhaps I should create a separate Facebook page mm. so that I can be consistent on one page for the beach body. Mm -hmm. But not have, I mean, everyone is more than one thing. And I, I don't want it to take away from my Facebook that I use for whatever rant I might have. Mm -hmm. Take away from my business. Maybe it's better for me to separate it out and have a separate Facebook mm -hmm. page, <clears throat> web page accepted for that. Maybe. Because part of, if I, this is the first we're meeting face to face, but maybe part of the frank rant is part of your authenticity. It's not necessarily saying everything has to be sunshine and roses because that's just not real life. That can almost sway people the other way. Like, Oh, isn't it great to live in Christmas land where everything's all just happy and unicorns are hanging out in her backyard. Mm -hmm. not true. So we're not saying that the rant is necessarily a bad thing, but do you pepper in enough of the good stuff? Because they do have to have a good feel of who you are. There are a lot of people out there who will call it like it, who like someone who will tell it like it is and be really frank. And that will draw that sort of person. So just give some thought to that. And we can talk about that more as the months go on of what the right approach is for you. Okay. Who else? Mr. Lopez, we've never met before. What's your biggest takeaway of the last hour together? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Really, uh, Obviously, the follow-up was really big. I agree with Molly on that one. However, my one of the big things that stuck with me was right at the end uh, where you were talking about creating a game plan and sticking to it and doing uh, three things that you do consistently for a month, not doing too many things at once, which I think is, is my uh, biggest downfall. Yeah, thanks for that. I think it's most people's downfall, Tony. You see all these great ideas. We also see a ton of people doing really different things. So we start trying to pepper it all in. And it turns out to have no consistency, no identity, and no brand to it. So I think that would be a great recommendation for you. Anyone else want to share what their biggest takeaway was? How about you, Miss Linda? Well, I loved everything. But I, I think personally I need to mix up my um how i contact people you know i message a lot but i like your idea about the recipe or just some other creative way to communicate with people mm -hmm. good so peppering in some variety yes excellent good anyone i know we're a technically four minutes over so i want to honor your time if you have to dive off the call absolutely do that Anyone have any questions they want to throw my way or run by me before we call it a night? I'd be happy to field anything. I have well, a question. Within reason. <laughs> I do have some boundaries there. Sarah? Yeah, I Jordy. Have I have a question about um, when we were talking about list your five identifiers and ask a good friend. Yeah. Is, the, is it, is their list, like is our list supposed to be about what the what we each think the five identifiers are or if like what their five identify if they think the five identifiers match up with us so here's what you do your list in your hand should be what you hope your clients and coaches would say about you because that would suggest the type of leader you want to be perceived as right don't tell those to your friend just ask your friend make a list of what this whole experience of being my friend is like for you and then compare what your hope is is that those lists look somewhat similar because then you know you're being authentic in your leadership style if they're completely different your leadership style may while it might look good on paper it may lack authenticity and we all know that when we sense someone isn't being authentic it decreases their believability 
when your believability goes down, it decreases your likelihood to want to partner with them. Authenticity is so important. And that, that exercise is going to help you realize how authentic your desired leadership style is. And if they're not aligned, then you can start digging into what do I need to, to develop skills-wise with my team and with my clients that will make them feel like they're my friends and feel that draw. Any other questions, comments, anything else anyone would like to throw out? I have one. Yeah. Sorry about my video. My I'm on my laptop and the camera doesn't work, so. No worries. It's Laura, right? Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Laura. Well, I think when I had mentioned earlier about, like, knowing what I need to do is just more about being on a schedule. I think also um, is, like, finding motivation aside from, like, personal development and things like that, which I do at podcasts, everything. But it's like, where do you draw, not your why, just like that motivation to like be able to get up and do these things. And I, I don't know like if that's an actual question, but. Mm -hmm. well, I think Laura, the answer that is going to be answered differently by everyone. For me personally, I'm a list gal. If I have four things I want to accomplish that day, I don't care if one of them is like fold the load of coloreds in the, the colored laundry in the, in the dryer, or if it's make sure the dishwasher gets unloaded and loaded, or it's develop content for my webinar Tuesday night, I write it down. If you are driven by achievement, write the four things down that you want to achieve that day, and every time you do them, go cross it off. You could even establish a reward system for yourself. That once the four are gone, if you could do all four for a whole entire week, you get a pedicure or you, whatever. You get to check out and have someone watch the kids while you go hang out with some friends, whatever motivates you. But think about what moves you and what motivates you and put that into play. If it's achievement, if it's connection, then make sure that the four things you're putting on your list involve other people and being able to inspire them in some way. I think the, the recommendation for you would be to step back and write down what makes me feel good. At the end of any given day, what makes me go, ah, that was a good day. Then put that into play as your motivating action. Work off that emotion. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions, comments? We'll take one or two more before we call it a night. Sarah, Sarah yeah. I got a question. On your say your to-do list, do you, how detailed do you get? Because sometimes I can be too detailed and get overwhelmed by it a little bit, or, and sometimes I just like to do a high level, here it is, here it is, here it is. And it helps me to just kind of, at least I know the main thing I need to get done. Yes. All the tasks behind it are just, that's where it gets overwhelming for, for me. Yes. I have a colleague who has a different system that you might like, Steve. She's red, red, yellow, green. Uh. Green is go time. This, my day does not end unless these are gone. Okay. Yellow, you know what? It would be great if I could get a couple of those off the list. Green, lowest priority, quickest to move to tomorrow's. So red is to go time or green is go time? Well, oh, did I say it backwards? Red, yeah. Red, the... red can be moved to tomorrow. Oh, to, to green tomorrow. Green is okay. go time. Got to go. These have to get done. Yellow, if they get done, great. If not, not critical. Red, lowest priority, quickest to move to tomorrow's task list. Got it. Try that okay. approach. It'll help you prioritize. Yeah, it's like an ABC sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I need to do more of that. I, yeah, <laughs> seriously. It's amazing just by putting it on paper what you can accomplish. Yeah, and I, I, I listened to someone else. I think it was one of the top coaches talk about having seasons and what you, what you put into your, let's say, Facebook marketing or whatever you're going to do. You know, there's so many things you can do, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and this and that. It's like he said is do a season. Take a season and learn that thing and then move on to something else. We all try to learn so much all at one time, you can't do it. You can just can't. It's just too much. Yeah. Like I said yeah. earlier. Jack, much. Jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, been there and done that. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a really common business mistake, and it's important to make it your goal 
to master certain trades before you try to take on others. Much like what we were talking, I was just talking about with, with Tony Lopez, take yeah. that month, dedicate a month to really learning a skill or put getting a habit in play before you try to add in a million other things. Uh, that's my, that's my plan this year. That's what I'm working Good. on now. Good. I have time for one more and then we're going to wrap it up. Anyone else? Co question, comment, feedback. Oh, I had a coach sign up tonight, by the way. So. Oh, all right. Way to go, Steve. One hour, I told Eric about the other day, so she signed up tonight. Wonderful. Good for you. All right, gang. I want to thank you for, A, interacting with me, B, being open, and C, just showing up. There, Eric made a post earlier of setting priorities and following through on them, and the fact that you carved out time on a weeknight to just show up Slide the distractions aside and dial your mind into learning for an hour and 11 minutes. Thank you for your extra time. I want to commend you for it. So I would be more than happy to send out that PowerPoint deck if that would help serve as a reminder and some notes and bullet points. If anybody wants that, shoot out the message and I'll make sure that gets sent to you. That'd be great. Thank you all for showing up. Keep up all the good work. I watch you. I creep around you from afar. I keep up all the good work, everyone. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I know you do. You call me out on it. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. It. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome. Good night, everyone.